Roundabouts are great. They are safe and efficient when used correctly, but they can be a source of confusion and frustration, which is why I'm making this video. Five things you should know about roundabouts. Number one, slowing down early and gradually. It's so important to do this, especially if the roundabout you're approaching is on a downhill. It's perfectly okay to use the brake and clutch together as you're coming down the gears. So you would stay on the brake as you're coming on and off the clutch to engage gears. Slowing down like this early and gradually helps you plan, assess and decide much easier. This roundabout here is quite a steep downhill and as mentioned it's so important to be braking. So I'm braking at this stage about 100 meters from it because of such a downhill. Going left so I check the mirrors, middle and left mirror that is, signal left, just double check the mirrors again. Now I'm continuing to brake as I go down the gears, down to third, off the clutch but I'm still braking. Checking the right, early and often. Down to second gear, off the clutch so I'm not coasting but still braking. So there's a couple of cars here I'm not sure, I'm gonna, just going to stop and go to first gear because there's a couple of cars here I'm not sure of. Looks like I'm going to be stopped a while so I just apply the handbrake. I'm watching the right, so there may be a little bit of a gap there now I can make it. One last look to be sure and it's all fine and I'm going left, first exit to the left, no pedestrians here, and away I go. So that was just a very steep downhill roundabout there, so important to brake early, consistently, and gradually, to help me make a better decision when I get there. Number two, understanding the 12 o'clock rule. This means that if your destination on a roundabout is to the right of 12 o'clock, you should indicate right and use the right-hand lane if there is one available. So in this example, Archerstown is clearly to the right of 12 o'clock. So we would use the right hand lane and indicate right here in this situation. So with this roundabout here then, we have the sign on the left here clearly stating that the second exit is to the right, Archerstown there. So second exit to the right, so I'm gonna check in mirrors, indicate right, getting down the gears, getting looks in early and often, down the second gear, looking, one last look into the inside lane because there is clearly an inside lane marked off. Staying on the inside of the mirrors, indicate left when I get to the level of that island, double check in the mirrors, and off I come. So that's the second exit to the right there at that roundabout. So it was clearly marked out that the second exit was to the right of 12 o'clock. So this next roundabout here, I'm going to be taking the second exit to the right. Now there's no sign telling me that the second exit is to the right. But as I approach it, I can see it there now, the second exit is clearly not straight, it's very much to the right at 12 o'clock. So I check my mirrors I've indicated, I slow down, I'm just looking to the right. There's a car coming there so I'm not sure, I'm going to go into first gear there for him. It's a bit of a hill so I'll apply the handbrake. Looks all clear now, get the bite, a few looks, last look, and I go. So I'm indicating right, staying reasonably close to the inside, checking the mirrors, indicating left, and then I exit off the roundabout then. That roundabout there was the second exit to the right. As I approach this roundabout, we're going to see an exception to the 12 o'clock rule because the sign clearly states that I should be in the right-hand lane for going straight, whereas normally I'd be in the left. But as the sign and the marking say otherwise, I must be in the right-hand lane for going straight. So I'm gradually coming over to the right-hand lane now, slowing down, getting down the gears, looking to the right early and often. That's the key, observing the right down the second gear. Slowing down, just making sure. Looks like there's a safe enough gap there. One last look. And I'm on the inside lane for this roundabout going straight. When I get level with the island, mirrors indicate. Just double checking the mirrors again, quick shoulder check. And it's all good. And I continue on there. So that was the second exit to go straight using the right hand lane, which is different to the normal course. Number three, mini roundabouts. It's important to focus on the right more at mini roundabouts and not get distracted by traffic coming from the left. Be aware of the existence of pedestrian crossings and road markings such as cycle lanes, hatch markings and the white centre circle in the middle in which case you should make a good effort to go around it if there's room. Approaching a mini roundabout here now, the focus is going to be about observing the right more so. Now I can certainly be aware of the left to make sure my way is clear and it's not blocked but the right is the priority and watching out for road markings. Going right, so mirrors indicate right, second exit right that is. 
getting down the gears then slowing down gradually being aware of the pedestrians there now more focus on this green car on the right more than, and the white van more than i'm going to roll into first gear can just keep rolling now it's fine on the right just double check and fine on the right i'm aware of the left there's nothing really there turning around avoiding the center circle mirrors indicate trying to keep well away from these hatch lines here as well and there's no pedestrians here so i'm clear to carry on so that's the key focus more on the right instead of the left don't treat a mini roundabout like a t-junction watch for traffic on the right more so and as well as that watch out for road markings such as pedestrian crossings and hatch markings and cycle lanes as well blind roundabouts in some cases roundabouts and especially mini ones you could be blinded by the existence of a wall a hedge parked cars or any other obstruction that could make life difficult for you as you approach the roundabout. So it's important to slow down, go into first gear and creep out leaning forward to get a better view so you don't accidentally pull out in front of somebody. This roundabout here is going to be uh, greatly affected by the wall on my right. I'm going to be taking the third exit to the right switch up in MERS, indicate right and this wall on the right is going to make the roundabout very, very blind, so I'm going to have to do it in first gear. So I'm going to get down the gears. I'm already in third, so I'm going to get in second gear. Now I'm trying to preview the roundabout. I'm not too worried about straight. I'm aware of straight, but I'm more worried about that car, the black car on, on the right there. So I'm in first gear. I'm just going to creep up garage. I'm just going to stop for a second now in case this white car is going straight. Okay, so a little gap I'm going to create. I'm going to stop for him. He's not hanging around. And I'm going to creep out again a little bit now, not rushing, just creeping out. Now it looks okay, no, this guy's coming, so he's going left, so if he starts turning, no, there's a car behind him. So I'm just waiting patiently for my gap here. And there's a car coming from straight, but I don't know where he's going, so I'm going to let him go. And I'm still conscious of the right. Um, another blue car there, so I'm going to just let him go. And there may be a gap now, no, another guy, so I'm just going to stop and let him go. This person has it right away. Now maybe the pedestrian is blocking some there, so I might get a gap. Looks like I have enough gap there to go. Third exit to the right. So I go around and I get level with the second exit. Check mirrors indicate left. I'm watching out for road markings and pedestrian crossings there. This is another roundabout that is quite blind and quite small. So there's um, a building on the on the right is gonna blind me in. It's gonna go straight. I'm gonna just drop her into first gear. Um, just creep. There's a black car coming, so I'm just gonna stop and apply the handbrake here. Um, he, she should go first, she's the right away. Getting a little bite then, creeping up a bit more. Looks like I have a safe enough gap, just don't ask to be sure. I'm keeping an eye on these pedestrians as well, and indicating left leaving it. And that's how we do a blind roundabout there in that example. Number five, the word spot. Try remember the word spot to help you remember all the things you have to do on a roundabout. S refers to slowing down, P is for position. O is for observation, and T is for the timing of the signals. So let's do it now as I approach this roundabout here using the spot. So S is for slow down, so I'm slowing down gradually, just checking my mirrors as I slow down, using the brake, getting down the gears, and that's S. So P is position then, okay? So I'm indicating left. Now position for the left will be to stay in the left lane if the lane opens up into two. So it does, I'm staying left. O's observation, plenty of looks, a little gap there, one last look, and then T is timing of signals, so making sure this signal stays on as I, as I exit through the roundabout. So that's the uh, first example there of using the spot technique. And finally, this roundabout here, I'm going to use the spot technique as well. I'll be taking the third exit to the right this time, so um, S is for slowing down gradually, braking early and gradually, slowing down. P is position. Now, I'll be taking the third exit, so I'll merge in the car right. Now the position here is fairly central, a little bit right of centre because it's only a one lane roundabout. But I'm conscious not to stop on that pedestrian crossing too if there's a car in front of me. So, always observation. I'll just go into first gear here, I'm not sure this black car is going, so let her go. Keeping the old head moving, and then one last look. So that's all for observation. Um, as I come around then, I must get the timing of the signals right. So I want to get level with the island of the second exit, check mirrors indicate left. And that's the T for timing. So S for slowing down, P for position, O for observation, and T for timing of the signals as I exit the roundabout. That's the spot technique there. So that's it for now, folks. I hope this video helped you gain a greater understanding of roundabouts. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and a share so we can spread the word. 
and as always thank you for watching